Welcome to Ennis Grown Golf Club. My name is Tom Bolko. I'm the golf course superintendent and general manager. What's all about? Well, we took over in 2012 um, to a golf course that was um, in, for lack of better terms, very beat up. We, uh, we instituted a program of improving the conditions of the golf course. The township had a long range master plan to remove bunkers and make it easier, but in the beginning we had to just improve conditions. And so the first year what we did was improved the, the growing surfaces on the greens and the fairways and the tees and uh, began work on the bunkers. Your local competitors in the area? Uh, Wincote Golf Club, um, White Clay Creek, Broad Run, Honeybrook, Deerfield, Rock Manor, um, for the, that's the bulk of them. And you feel like you're holding your own? We're holding our own. We started out as a almost high-end private club, limited membership. The evolution of it, both as a club and as a golf course, have been substantial. Uh, talk a little about its beginnings and what you've had to do to adapt to the current you know, uh, clientele. Yeah, and it, I, I played it in its first year, and I, like many people, struggled here. It, it lost, I think, a dozen balls on the front nine. Um, fescues that came in right against the fairways, and, and just to the general public, you, they couldn't play it or enjoy. I mean, you could play it, but they certainly wouldn't enjoy it. So over time, you know, those fescues had been pruned back you know they're still here but not in play and the playing surfaces that when the place opened were championship condition when they had the Exelon open here Exelon Invitational um, the playing conditions were phenomenal just absolutely top-notch but the general public just can't play in those conditions on a day-to-day -day basis so the golf course has softened um, fairway height raised greens not as firm, still roll nice, but you know, not rolling 11 and a half and 12, and have, um, and it's a, f a far more enjoyable golf course for the average golfer. It's still very difficult, challenging, um, a lot of shot value, but it's a far more enjoyable golf course. This golf course is one of the early works by Gil Hance, local architect who has gone on to become one of the hottest and most sought after architects in the world. I know you've made some changes to his original design. What have you done to adapt and yet maintain the integrity of Gill's original design? Primarily what we've changed are removal of the bunkers and we, we made a major change to the 16th hole which was the split fairway hole. Um, two separate fairways um, that, that were at different levels um, on the 16th hole. Um, and we completely um, fixed all the drainage in the bunkers, removed all the old sand, added new sand, and removed, completely eliminated, um, I think it's 12 bunkers on the golf course. So a lot of them from a maintenance standpoint, but many of them from a playability bunkers that were far too penal for the general public to play. Uh, I know the clientele has changed. Uh, now you have, uh, it's a municipal course, uh, you have leagues, after work leagues, uh, uh, things like that. Talk about the difference in, in clientele. We have um, actually varying, um, varying level of golfer. Um, we have lots and lots of youth that come out. We have the local high school, the Avon Grove High School um, golf team, which they have about 20 kids and about 19 of them are members here, junior members. And we have golf camps um, throughout the summer that come out and play. We have ladies. We have, um, we, our property abuts a over 55 residents and we, on every Tuesday, we have a morning league. Men and ladies come out. We have about 15 groups that come out, and they play 18 or nine holes, and then have a big luncheon. Um, 
and then we have the general senior play um, that we get here on a, on a daily basis. Um, the league play in the evening has picked up tremendously, but generally speaking, the, in the evening, it's, it's guys, guys and ladies after work that just come out and want to play nine holes. Parked, parked on a sprayer one day waiting to spray the 16th hole, 16th fairway. And there were three groups, three foursomes on the tee, waiting for a foursome that was trying to play their second shots into the green. The groups had to play their shots and then they had to drive all the way back past the, past the, the cliff and then turn around and drive up to the green. And at that point, I realized that for, play, for speed of play, a change had to be made on that hole. We made a very, it's a very um, dramatic change from what was there, but it's made it far more playable for um, the, the, you know, the, the better golfer and for the senior golfer and the ladies. Do you get feedback on a regular basis? Yes, on that whole, change? yes. Every, there has, I, um, other than getting um, beat up on Facebook every once in a while, <laughs> um, everybody who's played it has loved it or enjoyed it more than they did the last time. And in April, it was April 2014, um, we began we began the project. It took approximately 10 days, and at the end, um, we basically increased our fairway acreage by about um, three quarters of an acre, but we improved the hole dramatically, allowing options for for players of all abilities. And the senior, the senior golfer, absolutely loves it. They they can play on the right hand side, up to the green, without a forced carry. Let's go take a look at the split. The fairway runs all the way down to the edge of the green. So if a golfer doesn't want to have, not that this is a super intimidating golf shot, but they don't want to have the forced carry, they can play the upper fairway and bump and run it up onto the green. There are people who don't have this carry shot. Plenty of people. A lot of people. A lot of people. We have a, a, a whole group of golfers that they hit their tee shot up near the 150, and then they play the upper fairway. And then once you get to the upper fairway, you can bump and run it, rescue club, lob wedge, pick your poison. Not a bad toss. Not a bad toss. <laughs> Really? I mean, what, are there other changes in the works? What are your plans? Um, we're pro changes that we're going to have in the future are adding some tee boxes. We have some forced carries on the back nine that are challenging for seniors and ladies. Um, so we're, we're planning on adding three additional tee boxes on the back nine. The other holes that have always been a little controversial in this golf course are the par three fifth which is a uh, short par three from an elevated tee to a very low green. People either love that hole or hate that hole. And the tenth, which is a downhill um, par, short par four uh, over uh, some gunch and uh, into a, a hard green to hit. Number ten, um, the, the gunk that you call has been eliminated. So now the golfer um, can hit their tee balls down down to the landing area and play a second shot and if they can't carry the force carry to the green they can play their ball from a an area that had been under cover for years that we've opened up that now is just cut at rough height we've added a footbridge so that people can walk down and cross the footbridge. There's a small creek in there. Um, cross the footbridge and get to the other side and play their golf ball. So of all the improvements we've done, um, one would think that 16 would be the most talked about. But number 10, um, everybody comes up and loves that.